All right, so today we're going to be talking about the PDC cycle. Um, and what is the PDC cycle? It's the pyruvate dehydrogenase cycle, or dehydrogenase complex, actually. And so what this is, is the intermediate between glycolysis um, and the TCA cycle. So we have glycolysis first, um, and then we have the PDC, and then we have the TCA, and then after TCA, um, we have the electron transfer change. So we're going to look at the PDC today. Um, so what is the PDC? The, they have two goals for the PDC, um, which is to break down pyruvate, which is uh, a three carbon molecule into two carbons and then a CO2. That's goal number one. And goal number two um, is to produce NADH. So we'll look at those two goals right now. Um, before that, we want to just see after glycolysis. So glycolysis, we start with um, glucose and this will produce two pyruvate, two NADH, and also two ATP. Okay, so these two pyruvate will be shuttled um, now into the mitochondria because remember glycolysis is in the cytoplasm. Um, so this pyruvate, uh, which is three carbons, it's going to be shuttled into the mitochondria um, through a transport system and it'll be going to the mitochondria and now into the PDC. All right, so we have, right here we have the two pyruvates that are now in the PDC um, in the mitochondria and we'll see how that actually will work. All right, so the PDC has um, three different parts to it. All right? So it's divided into E1, E2, and E3, um, which are all different parts to the, to the PDC um, and so the first one is called pyruvate dehydrogenase the second one is called um, dihydrolipoyl um, transacetylase and the last one is dihydrolipoyl um, dehydrogenase as well Okay. Um, and so in the E1 we have we have different coenzymes within each of these different segments. In E1 we have TPP. Um, in E2 we have lipoA and also CoA. And in E3 we have NAD and also FAD. Okay. Um, and so just uh, for our reference, CoA and also NAD are co-substrates. So TPP, lipoid, and FAD are all prosthetic groups. And so prosthetic group um, and co-substrate, prosthetic group is means it's covalently bond to the enzyme. Um, and co-substrate is free to interact and, and move around. Okay? Um, so we'll see what the, the basic goals of E1, E2, and E3. Um, E1, we'll see that uh, we're doing a decarboxylation and also um, uh, acetylation transfer. Uh, E2, if we see the transacetylase, we should know that the goal will be um, transacetylation. Uh, and also for E3, we'll see that it's a regeneration of our FAD. Um, we also want to regenerate uh, dihydrolipoil. And so regeneration. So everything about E3 is just regeneration. When we go into the PDC cycle, we have pyruvate coming in. Okay, so pyruvate, um, so we'll break this down, E1, then E2, and then E3, okay? So pyruvate will come in, um, and it'll go with TPP, so TPP will come in, um, and now at the end we'll have TPP and pyruvate attached, uh, but now, so pyruvate looks like this, so pyruvate looks something similar to this, um, all right? Um, and pyruvate will get decarboxylated. Remember, that was one of our goals. Um, so that will be this group up here. So if you can imagine, now all we'll see is, so this TPP will come in and attack right here, um, bump up this uh, ketone, and then move it down, and then bump up the CO2. So that's why we decarboxylate, and we also have that acetyl group transfer. All right, so we, we uh, transfer that acetyl group onto the TPP. Um, so this is all in E1. So now in E2, we have this TPP attached to this alcohol, um, and it's going to react uh, with that 
lip oil, um, lip oil. Um, so it, it looks like this. And it has some type of R group here. It's not important what that is. All we need to know is that this group right here um, gets attacked. So, so we'll see that at the end. Uh, we'll have something like this. So um, this group will get bumped off right there, that bond. And this COH and H will get attached up there. And we'll see that the TPP will, will get reformed and, and come out. All right, so now that we have this, Right here, we'll also see that um, a, the, the coash will come in. So, so coash will come in and make acetyl-CoA. Oh, and, and that will leave us with S, SH, SH, something like that, right? So if the coash comes in and it attacks right here, this whole group right here will now form acetyl-CoA because we'll see that the OH will come down and make a ketone again and make the acetyl group which will be attached to CoA right there. And so we'll, for E3, we need to reform everything. So if you want to reform back into this S, S, like that, all, right, all we need to do is use FAD. FAD will go into FADH2. Um, because we are trying to uh, oxidize this dihydrolipolysine um, into the lipoid, we used FAD, um, as an oxidizing agent and it gets reduced. So it gets, re re it gets reduced to FADH2, but in order to reform this FADH2 um, to FAD, we're gonna use NAD and it'll go into NADH. Okay, so we see that our first goal was to reform this lipoid and then our second goal was to reform FAD. The final product, when we get out of this, so the pyruvate um, was our starting product. So we had two pyruvate to begin with. Um, now we're going to end up with uh, two NADH and also two acetyl CoA. Also, as a byproduct, we're going to have CO2, um, and that's two of them just because we had two pyruvate, uh, and that's it. Hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.